Got anything disturbing yet? Um, oh, I got one. How about a, uh, a ghost that uh, comes out of the shadows and... Well, that's scary, not disturbing. What's the difference? Well, disturbing is more out of place, whereas scary is provocation of fear. So, for like example, for scary, it would be, ah! And then for disturbing, it would be like, what the fuck? I'm speechless. They made a centipede using ass to mouth. Like, you can't really make out what it is. I guess that makes sense. So, like, a hmm, living windpipe in the shape of a saxophone? Yeah, pretty much. And it's played by blood on the dance floor. That's not funny. You look like a twat, by the way. Hi, I'm KB. Well, this is a sight to behold. A revisit to the most liked and disliked countdown I have ever had to offer. And now I'm going to try and sway away from my procrastinating 17-year-old try-hard self and more into the old mature self that I have evolved into now. And I have to be honest, going back to this has been a hard choice for what new I can bring to it, but eventually though, that will be proven true. Not only that, but a new mentality to include, or a more accurate mentality to which I'll say it again. Disturbing does not equal scary, it is not gross, it is out of place. Meaning something which is upsetting or worrying or something that makes you anxious because you can't quite understand it. Unfitting is my point. For more, I left a comment on the first video. As long as it's pinned at the top, you should see it. Another thing to address is the horror game dispute. People seem to think that Majora's Mask, God of War, Devil May Cry, Dante's Inferno and Prototype are all horror games. So did God of War ever intentionally provoke fear in me or was it just mature and violent? Was Majora's Mask just a dark game with strange creepypasta? Fact is, no matter how strange or mature most of these games are, horror is not the focus. Therefore, it is not the genre. So in my view, including them was valid. Zombies Ate My Neighbors is debatable, I suppose. So I don't really want to keep rambling on about this. I want to talk about the list in the most informative and comedic and book way possible, if I can believe that to be possible. So, without further ado, here is the top 10 most disturbing bosses in video games round 2. Uh, one more thing as well, I might exaggerate my reactions during this video, so if you want to call me a woman's reproductive organ mixed with a cat, go ahead. So, enjoy! Alright, so part of me wants to replace bosses from my last list that belong to the same franchise, so that we can give others a chance. Not really pity, just discovery. So the thing about Pollux and Castor is that the reveal is not to be expected. In Greek mythology, Castor was killed, to which Pollux asked Zeus to share his immortality with him, forming what is known today as Gemini. That's what my dad is! Which is a constellation of the Zodiac and is Latin for twins. We have to find a better slave trader. I don't think that was mentioned anywhere. Tolerate your impudence. You will not see her. A baby eagle to burn itself on the stove while older brother is cooking a stir fry. Now it's pronounced Igor. It doesn't really get much more odd than this until Castor is ripped from his brother and then beaten by Kratos. I'm not sure if that's meant to hurt Pollux or Castor. Or just, he doesn't have a heart or a stomach or a gut to keep him alive. And I suppose he just has nerve endings. <laughs> So that's kind of left me out of the focus on nightmare fuel and more on the scratching my head. Ow! Oh, sorry, schizophrenic voice. No, no. The brain is squishy and full of blood vessels when you touch it, but it also has a mind of its own. Strange, that's what people say about the penis. Back on topic. Some rare species of brain, however, can be mutated and talk to you in multiple voices. Oh nice, I didn't realize scrambled parrot was on the menu. Now they may have tried this again in 3, but that was a mere propagandarian of a president with no real flesh behind it. This is the real deal, through visuals and audio. You think you can destroy me? Destroy me? Now the lightning thing about it, or him, is that you can get him to kill himself as an option, so that you don't have to get blood on your hands. That was kind of a literal statement. Oi. Oi. Now through the imagery that we behold from Pandora, she's only number eight, what the fuck? You just can't wait for a person to finish, can you? You have to assume everything has been said right there. 
Anyway, she was something of a foxy surprise with each feature that rose out of the shadows, including that anal scent above her head. I mean, if she did a poll to ask the internet what her best feature was, most people would probably say her bum. Don't know which one to be exact though. However, because I've talked about her before and when it gets to the actual fight, you have the imagery implanted in your head and it goes away pretty soon, especially considering that she blooms into a butterfly for some odd reason. So I guess it's time for Shadow Teddy to linger around a bit. I am a shadow, the true self. I shall give you the truth you claim to hold so dear. I think you're full of shit. For a cuddly toy of this fashion, he sure does have nuggets of realism, doesn't he? Though one reason truth is hidden is because we try to forget the events that occurred. In which case, who is to blame in the end? Sorry, getting carried away. Bearing the fact that you have to witness a giant dangling toy with what appears to be a hollow interior. Actually, well, it is. According to the wiki, Shadow Teddy is nothing but darkness and represents the reversed star Arcana, in which itself represents depression, self-doubt, and the fear of being alone. The large pity resides in represents those who know those who are depressed and feel trapped inside a hole that consumes them and keeps them trapped within the vicious circle. This self-doubt in how he preaches that living in delusion and ignorance is the only true bliss. He also represents nihilism for a big factor of his thoughts. Its cracked face represents the empty void and he is practically empty, yeah. This is all from a demented looking falsely stuffed teddy bear which is pretty much the disturbing part. And for anything else to top that would be a miracle. Sorry. Sorry. Something just topped that. Looks like Amnesia and Machine for Pigs wasn't the first to engineer squealers. The thing is referred to as Mushu Pork, or Pow. Your choice if you'd rather let Kung Pow Whopper take your breath away. I do not appreciate being chased around in a circle by some incomplete hybrid with a sinister grin on his face, which makes me think that it's going to combine me with something even more horrible. Like this. One of the weirder things is that when it gets shocked, its skeleton looks like a Velociraptor. Eh which should probably say something about evolution. And what the fuck is with that laugh? <laughs> Not sure if sadistic or worried. <laughs> oh, Gygus. Long time no see. You know I used to say that Gygus got less and less disturbing the more his features and characteristics processed in my head. I may not be as weak as you think, but maybe it's just that other things overrule him so he just loses the spotlight more. In the beginning, Gygus was loyal but also stubborn, which made light in the face of demise at the hands of Ness foreseen in the distant future. Speculations from Mother rule him as an indestructible force, except for one simple lullaby sung to possibly calm him down. But Gygus' presence is essentially the main reason why he's on this list. Chaos breaks loose over the world as animals start to act strange and hostile, much like when paranormal activity floods through the household. So when the events in Earthbound occur, and he submits Porky to being his right hand, and becoming so powerful and consumed that he's lost all reasoning, evil, it's him. The Devil's Machine was created to keep Gygus and his powers at bay, but the machine is shut off by Porky, and the fight is where all hell breaks loose. Gygus' attacks are random, his speech is irrational, and his only form of weakness is prayer with human emotions. Which might say a lot about his character and past. Contradictory to me, including him on the top mysterious characters list. Now I've explained this concept in that said video to where Shigesato Itoi walked into the wrong theater and witnessed what he thought to be a rape scene, but was in fact a lovemaking scene turned into rape. Murder. There is talk about how the breast is like a living being that deserves love, and how some of Gygus' lines are inspired by that scene. There are a few fan theories out there, such as the similarities between Gygus and Mewtwo, with their powerful psychic capabilities, as well as the fetus resemblance to which Sigusato has already explained that it's a major coincidence. With Gygus, it's a lot to think about and disturbing factors rise high with the added background music that I have not yet discussed, but it's self-explanatory. It's very trivial and maybe that's what's so distracting about it, but nevertheless, he's an icon of video game villains no matter what way you look at it. I, I think I can pull off the Gygus face. <laughs> Shut up, this wretched human wannabe. I did explain why I found the mother to be more disturbing, but I need to go into more detail. Imagine you want to hit on someone in a bar. You say, hey gorgeous. He or she turns around and has 10 tits 
which they could say is abs from working out, but you run out of the door screaming before they can explain. In relation to being a broodmother, she is the one who breeds the children from a large sack of pus. The other broodmothers breed darkspawn. <sighs> that is actually a tongue twister, I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> I'll leave this in the video, to be honest. And, and she leads Darkspawn. That's what I'm trying to say. All brood mothers look disgusting and have suffered the 10 day trial process of actually becoming one, including the what you would call hybrid. The mother was freed from the call of the old gods by the architect, but instead of thanking him, she became insane at what she had become, making her not right in the head and acting on will rather than just instinct, which tells you about what the women went through during this trial. And to be honest, this makes me want to keep my legs. I want to visit places, not be stuck in some nest asking people to bring me soup when I'm hungry. I'll make it myself. I think I know what you're gonna say, I hope I am right with this prediction, and there is no way that I can take the Binding of Isaacs cartoony style seriously, and to that I show you. <laughs> That's weak, it's just paper and crayons. The game is pretty much a mind crawler when you look into the background of it. First, the plot of the game is that a nude boy named Dave, just kidding, it's Isaac, flees into the basement to avoid his mother who wants to sacrifice him to prove her faith to God, inspired by a story from the Bible. So within the case of avoiding this tragedy and completing this roguelike game, Isaac must defeat some bosses to move up and kill his mother. We get the Duke of Flies who does, take a guess, Gemini who strikes you with Castor attached to him, or Pollux or whatever they used, Steven who is pretty much Gemini in a gimp suit, Fistula, the fist. Loki, who is the everyday girl's fantasy. Gertie, the heart attack grill. Peep, the peeing shit. And Mom, I just heard you call her MILF. Shame, she's Goliath. So I don't think your dangly bits would reach. You don't see all of Mom, and can I just call her Mum? Seriously. But I think that's the really disturbing part, because when all you see is eyes peeping through glory holes and chunky steroid legs stomping, you don't want to know what the rest of that entails. So I'm just going to stop here while you figure it out for yourself and put all this game together and even the DLC which I haven't actually explained in the list of things I made but that would have made this entry quite big. Moving on. So I talked about Cerberus last time with what I expected to be a three-headed dog turning out to be a worm instead with firing out souls in the form of hairballs. But having minions crawling out to your tits? Imagine getting breastfed by that. It'll be like that scene in Eight-Legged Freaks. Not that anybody your age still gets breastfed. Could be a possibility. If there is one factor alone which defines your own version of lust, then you've won on the disturbing scale, my friend. I mean, this kind of horror is not what you want from a gangbang. A bunch of demons coming to join the party. I'd probably have to seek bitty advice from Daddy instead. Die! Now, before you say that Half-Life is a horror game, I don't really see it being that. And in fact, it's widely regarded as science fiction. So saying that, we can forcefully disregard the Geiger's theory to bring you a properly proportioned extraterrestrial fetus from the mothership known as Nihilanth, who is leader of the Zen forces. And I guess Zen can understand Goo Goo Gaga. Besides from its insanely graphically lacking appearance, it casts upon you some cryptic messages that combine with daunting background music such as Die, you old die. The voice actor pretty much pressed his tongue against the gum under his bottom lip, made his voice raspy, added a bit of reverb, and then went... So in all, it's a big-headed slow talker, and has a huge facial expression. Only one, though. I wonder if they'll include it in a real-life parade. Spider-Man would be flipping his shit. Now I noticed in the comments from the last video that there were a lot of suggestions for what other people think are disturbing. So the biggest ones that I thought uh, I would include as honorable mentions in this list. So let's have a look. So we have the crawler from Fable 3. Uh, that's about it from this scene. The dead hand from Ocarina of Time. It's very freaky and weird, but others beat it. Mimi from Super Paper Mario. She snaps her neck to become a spider, but others beat it. Genova from Final Fantasy 7. Its influence is disturbing, but shut up! Matt Helms from No More Heroes 2. I'm gonna kill you. Still alive, wanker. Nephysteris from Devil May Cry 2. The face of the company wants to murder you, apparently. The Sorrow from Metal Gear Solid 3. More of the providing Batman and Superman rehab. The Rakai from Borderlands. 
I don't really care if I'm childish by pointing out the fanny farts. The gaping dragon from Dark Souls. So if the Rack Hive wasn't the only one that had a vagina, this one has a vagina that reminds me of the movie Teeth. Zero Two from Kirby 64 and Mark Soul from Kirby Superstar Ultra. Yeah, one's a bleeder from a game for all ages and the other is a symmetrically disconfiguring sadist. But I found a others disturbing, all right? Leave me alone. Mum, tell them. Mm. All right, so we get the same boss from Contra 3. Looking a bit perkier, a bit odd, but nothing to be sniffed at. So from all the trivia we've made of different entries on this list, this one really doesn't look all that disturbing. <laughs> that thing is not only eating people, it's flowing graphics compared to sprites to make it look like Pizza the Hut from Spaceballs. And there's also this boss, and this boss, and this boss, and... But that's more Resident Evil 4 style. This. This. What do I say? What do I do? I... Why are flies coming out of his nose? What? Why is it where its arse should be? Was the previous head its actual anus? I've got a turtle head poking out. Um... Uh... No, I got, uh... You're not perfect. perfect. I'm done. Alright, I'm done. No more proof. I've made a satisfiable list. That's the straw. And now I'm gonna have to play Silent Hill or Outlast to cheer myself up. Alright, so follow the links in the description and yada yada yada. Lights out, go away! No one even knows whether he's male, female, a cyborg, a banana, Bruce Wayne. All brood mothers, why is that such a hard fucking word to say for me?